Hey everyone, yes, I know, it's not Monday, it's, what, I think I'll just release this Tuesday night, Wednesday, whenever it's done. Yeah, I completely lost track of the days for this week's Q&A. It was Sunday, it was like 10.30 in the evening, and I'm like, I forgot. And then I was going to do it on Monday and be like, oh, I'll just release it Monday night or Tuesday morning, whatever. And then my P4S Part 2 guide failed rendering for two and a half hours, and I lost two and a half hours of work, so... I, uh, yeah, Ivy, I'm trying to do an op- <sighs> Well, as you can see, currently, cat dead. So, anyway, I gotta do a Q&A. Um, I'm gonna release it this week. I'm not gonna wait till next week. Um, and we'll just call this a weekly Q&A with Mr. Happy, and we'll forego the Monday until it's back on schedule. But anyway, uh, thank you to our sponsors over on Patreon for supporting, despite the fact that the show couldn't even make it onto the correct day. <laughs> they still are over there. And all my content's free on YouTube anyway. So those people are just doing extra. And I appreciate that. Thank you to our patrons of Darkness, Scrooge Across on Genova and Kernai Oni, who have gone above and beyond. Thank you to all of you for tuning in. If you have a question for next week, put it in the comment section of the video below. And uh, no more lightning rounds. So I'll be able to vet them properly, look through them properly, and answer them, hopefully, properly. Let's get to it. All right, first question, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello, hi, congratulations on the clears. Thanks, really enjoyed watching you. Thanks as always for the fun content. I'm gonna make a slight adjustment. That way I can speak into the actual <laughs> microphone. I was surprised to see none of the top 10 clears, including Warriors, seeing how strong their healing is this expansion. Is this consideration for week one team purely DPS or are there other factors? Warriors healing looks OP in dungeons. It is largely a non-factor when it comes to cutting edge savage progression. You're almost never winning or losing because of blood wedding, for example. It's because of execution. And as long as you can execute, then whatever deals the most damage, as you've stated, will clearly be the best route. Now, I'm, I'm still surprised Warrior wasn't in the top 10. It is an incredibly popular job. It's a very easy job to prog on. But it's also no surprise to see the top 10 have Gunbreaker Dark Knight, because that's the highest tank combination so um that's about it really it, it is just down to those first 10 teams really prioritizing the dps totals i saw this one didn't have a hashtag but i'll answer it anyway hello hi hope your monday's going well it was two days ago question is is there any use for your ver arrow and ver thunder on red mage when scatter is still effectively more potent so i i don't enjoy playing red mage so correct me if i'm wrong but it doesn't scatter have like a five second six second cast time isn't the whole point you're supposed to ver arrow scatter ver thunder scatter and then alternate between the two because scatter's potency is so it's it's high but it's also a super long cast time i could be mistaken but i'm 99 percent sure that's the answer to your question Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hi. Hey, I was wondering what are your thoughts on Square Enix's recent announcement that they're looking to incorporate any NFTs into their future endeavors and what possibilities and ramifications, either good or bad, could this mean in regards to Final Fantasy XIV? I think it's a short-lived endeavor. Square Enix has shown that their uh, aptitude for, I guess, adapting to modern technological trends is never, never accurate. It just never is. So it seems like one of those things that as a company, it seems like a fever dream that just probably won't come to fruition. It's technology they don't want to ignore because if it was to be something that were to dominate the market, they obviously couldn't just ignore it. Being a AAA company, at the end of the day, they are going to try to make money. But I think NFTs are probably going to fall flat. They're probably going to try it in one game, two games, maybe, and then that'll be the end of it because their actual fan base, their paying fan base, is probably not going to be that super big a fan. The only thing I could possibly see Square Enix getting away with in this regard is to basically only have this wouldn't even make sense because this isn't even really the fully the definition of, of an nft they need to have skins that are essentially interchangeable between their games or items that are interchangeable between their games once you own them you can use them in any of the games but i don't think they're making the, you'd have to very specifically design your entire company's lineup of games to allow for something like that and square enix has never shown that kind of cohesion i suppose with anything other <laughs> Ivy, with anything other than maybe their mobile games and specifically like the Brave Exvius line or something like that. So I think it's I think it's a an acknowledgement of the trend that is currently in question and an acknowledgement that it won't be ignored, but that it'll probably fall flat. I suspect it'll fall flat. All right, next one. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hi, Haps. Hi. Hope you and your family are well. We're doing great. Thanks. This is my first time asking, but in your opinion, what jobs seem to suffer the most from mistaking like misaligning cooldowns, drift, or death? 
Some jobs seem to recover from mistakes well, like Red Mage, but others like Bard seem to struggle a lot. Red Mage even has its moments. If Manification goes at a bad time, it can definitely screw over a Red Mage pretty hard. Bard, it's almost impossible to fix a mistake without just not doing your rotation for two minutes, so that one's really high up there. Easier one is Dancer, almost no error whatsoever. Um, they have no sort of issues with alignments whatsoever. They can move it around freely. It's just a matter of pressing the buttons when they become available, and they're not crucial to their core rotation. Um, other jobs, I'd say Reaper recovers pretty well. Dragoon, Dragoon gets back on its flow, but recover is not the word I would use to describe that. Summoner sucks to fix if you've died or misaligned stuff. It's it's not impossible if you're doing the spell speed build, but with the crit build, yeah. Black Mage, super easy. Red Mage, already spoken about. Um, let me think, Machinist. Machinist, not too bad. Uh, it is just a matter of catching up with your drills, and they might fall out of alignment for a little bit, but even if you were to try to forcefully realign them, it wouldn't be that bad to do because it's just, you know, once every minute. As long as you don't die at the two-minute mark, then getting up is, you're, you're screwed on almost any job if you die right as two minutes are going out, which, uh, with the way the fights are designed, is kind of common when people make mistakes. So, yeah, what else, man? Paladin really doesn't enjoy that. Warrior recovers moderately okay, but, you know, obviously, once again, that's, you know, it depends on exactly when you die. Um... Gunbreaker probably has a terrible time losing all the carts and falling out of alignment with their buff window. Dark Knight. I don't know if Dark Knight's that troubled when it comes to that, thinking about it. They might be if it's like a really bad time, but that's, that's again, that's everyone. And then what else? Monk? Monk doesn't like it. Monk Monk falls apart as soon as your twos, as soon as everything stops lining up. You just having to start over in the middle of collecting everything and making sure that your timers are once again on point. It just it falls that falls apart hard. I think it's fixable though with perfect balance. Might be. Uh, what else? Samurai? No idea. I couldn't comment. Samurai. Um, who am I missing? Ninja. I don't know. I think Ninja's same as some of the other ones. It's just, it has to be the exact right time. As long as, as long as you can get to trick on time, you usually get to everything on time. So as long as you don't miss that. So jobs like Bard, Bard are definitely is one of the jobs that's at the top of that list where it struggles. Dragoon, very rigid. I would put that near the top of the list. And uh, I think those two are really the most rigid out of all the jobs, but I'm sure there's people with some experience on other jobs that have more input on that. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Haps, hope you're having a good day. What is your favorite job in melee range for this caster tank healer so far this expansion? Thank you for not asking me to explain why. Melee is always monk. That's just a monk life. Uh, range fizz, bard. I think bard is by far the most fun. I think it's the strongest. Um, but with machinist, very close by in pretty much all regards. Caster. Uh, I haven't played much of the casters. I'm okay with new summoner. Um, it's a little boring, but I know I'm going to like black mage. So the black mage is going to take my win there. Tank paladin is always my favorite. The warrior I'll play most of the time because it's dead brain easy. And healer. Kind of a toss up. I'm a big fan of everything except white mage right now. Um, I'm going to go scholar. I think scholar is probably the one I have the most fun playing. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Mr. Happy, grats on the Savage clear. Thanks. Quick question. Now that the tier has been cleared, what is the general consensus on the jobs that were updated in this patch? Dancer was abandoned. <laughs> there were some pure firepower jobs they didn't buff that they should have. We know they're buffing them in 6.08. Um, and I think that was probably the biggest miss. I also think White Mage's recoverability from a death or from mistakes is something they largely it should have been able to adjust. I think of adding a mana value to like lilies, like a something on return for using lilies, making them damage neutral, giving them MP recovery, something. They needed something to recover from deaths. Um, I also think keeping their lilies on death would probably be a really good way of helping to combat that if they were to do anything at all. So there's a few changes. Momo has listed a few things that I thought were really, really good for White Mage. Um, other than that, it, it was really just a matter of flavor. Reaper, Monk, God Tier Strong, Bot, Bard, God Tier Strong. Uh, Red Mage, God Tier Prog Strong, um, and honestly, so close to Black Mage that it was it didn't even really matter much for Prog. Uh, yeah, the rest of the melees are kind of middle of the pack. Ninja still was doing okay after the change. They desperately needed that change. All the tanks okay, but Paladin definitely too low. There were pulls we would have lost if we had a Paladin versus having a Warrior or a Gunbreaker. Excuse me, without a doubt, I got the hiccups all of a sudden. Um, healers, I was kind of okay with across the board, but Astro really shined. Um, even with some of their uh, job changes being annoying, like too much button bloat and clarifying redraw. Mm, no, it was still really, really good. I think that a lot of uh, job imbalance is over-exaggerated most of the time relative to what you need to complete content. It's generally over-exaggerated, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't be buffed or nerfed or whatever. It's just, uh, you know, the, the only job I genuinely think 
needs desperate help as dancer. Um, and you can still clear with a dancer. So it really doesn't matter as much as even I'm making it seem like. But that, that job is that job needs Jesus right now. It plays great, but just the damage just needs help. Needs help. All right, hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello. Hi. Congrats on the clear. Watching you guys progging was so much fun. Thank you. Co uh, copying early progress strategies and using them in Pug is a very common theme in the 14 raids. Yes. Typically, those strategies will be named with... Oh, God. I can already see what's being said like two lines down. Uh, happy Brambles, Billy Billy Lines. One of your guys' strategies was adapted by the JP raid theme, and your Fountain of Fire strategy for P3S are, is being called Fountain of Fire... Uncle Happy Stretch. Well, you could have just said Happy Ojisan. I'm used to being called Happy Ojisan. Uh, there also seems to be a trend to shorten it into Uncle Stretch. <laughs> okay, that I didn't know. That's funny. That's actually really funny. Um, yeah, I've been called Uncle um, Happy Ojisan for years. Um, when I started getting really, getting to know some of the JP community members really well, uh, they they mentioned that I'm Happy Ojisan. Zeno, I forgot his name, but he is a really, he is a really good name too uh, in the Japanese community. Um, but yeah, I don't, I, I think, I think it's because it's not even just directly uncle. Cause I think Ojisan can be used as sort of an equivalent to Mr. But there's no, it's, it's kind of shared with uncle. It's just, it, it I, from what I remember being told, it's an honorific that it just, it, it, it's, a, it's an about, about that status use. Like it's like moderately more respectful, but it's also like, I don't remember. It's been a year since it's been explained to me, but it's funny. <laughs> Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Haps, how do you feel about the glamour system? Well, I don't really care about glamour all that much anyway, minus my toad head, but Final Fantasy XI and WoW have better glamour. In fact, almost every MMO has better glamour systems than Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, I would prefer a transmog system or something like Guild Wars 2 or, dude, even something like Final Fantasy XI would be better. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a good thing I don't use it a lot because I don't have to deal with the hardships, but it's... Can use some improvements. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Haps, hope you're doing well after week one Savage. Really, the guides were more prog than the freaking Savage tier itself. My question is related to that. My static and I managed to get our first week one clear as a group. Nice. Wondering how you think the difficulty was compared to other tiers. I'm going to release, I think actually right after this, I'm recording the video where I talk about what I thought about the tier overall. Um, in terms of difficulty, it's about on par with Eden's Gate. Um, I think people over conflate some of the mechanics they might not be used to or might be seeing for the first time as more difficult. They see the tethers and everything in P4S and they see uh, Pinax and they just, it, it really, it really confuses a lot of people. It's a lot of visual clutter. And there's actually a lot of mechanics in this, in this tier that are, uh, the mechanic itself is visual clutter, trying to make sense of everything being on the screen at once. Um, but that's not all too uncommon from stuff we had last expansion. So this was a really, really good first tier. I think the difficulty was nailed spot on. Looking forward to seeing where they go from here. And I'll be having a much more thorough thought video on this in the near future. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello. Hi. Long time watcher. First time asker. Been playing Final Fantasy XIV for close to eight years now. At first as a casual, but slowly trying to break into more hardcore play. Both of the Endwalker EX trials, while relevant, cleared them both while relevant. But my ever-changing work schedule is impeding my ability to find groups to join a static. So I think people really overestimate how much your first step into raiding should be with a static. Um, some of the best stories that come out and some of the best friendships that form are over grief that happens in the party finder. <laughs> it's it's genuinely it's a pain because a lot of the times you'll go into the party finder and there's it's kind of a transition where you're learning and you're getting used to things that are brand new in the party finder and you have to be that person that wipes the group a bunch of times. The idea is eventually you fail enough to the point where you start to pick up trends and you start to improve your gameplay and then you become the person who's playing well, but then you have to help the people who don't do not play as well and they need to be helped to brought up to that next step. And it's very tough to keep your cool, um, both when you are the one failing because it's easy to blame yourself for what's happening. And once you've actually improved yourself and you have to help those other people because you want to get the clear and you want to see success. So I think the party finder is fine. You just have to go in understanding that it, you are not there to clear the tier. You are not there to get loot. You are there to improve first and foremost. If that means taking a zero or one chest party because there's an open spot that you, you can join, go right ahead. Don't, don't focus on getting two chests for your first clears. Focus on joining groups where you can watch how other people play and improve your own play because that will get you to the point where you can be in two chest parties, join two chests, weekly clear, all that stuff, and join a static um, far faster than just trying to jump in. And on top of that, your schedule. You know, it, it just fits your schedule to be able to, when you want to log in, just see if you can try something. 
Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello, Mr. Happy, and congrats on the clear. Thank you. I was curious to hear your take on RDPS versus the NDPS metric. This is referring to FF logs. I know that de facto is RDPS, but to me it seems NDPS is a better metric for how uh, measuring how well you actually played your rotation. I get that RDPS is very useful, but as a fellow bard, it always seems like our RDPS is extremely dependent on the rest of the group. This is entirely true. Uh, if you have others who die, for example, it can really tank our contribution. So, um... What, you, what you've basically done here is you've actually used FF logs the way it's intended. The, diff the three different DPS statistics that you get on FF logs are designed to tell you different things about your performance. Some of them are how well you're using other people's buffs, how well your own buffs are being used, and how well you as an individual actually did. Those are the three different things that you're looking at there, and they should all be taken individually. If your RDPS is, let's say you got a gold on RDPS, but let's say that you're uh, your NDPS was like purple, for example. Let's say you were like a like an 85 or like an 82. That means that there's 15 to 18 percent of bards who had played better or maybe got more crits, but let's just say played better um, on average. So there's an upward trend still for you to have. Um, it, you can really credit your team for having worked on good buff alignment, having performed well, and you being able to reap the rewards of that. But then you have a personal level of improvement that can still be made. They're not all, well, not one metric matters over the rest. One might for people like considering the overall job balance, because some of them are RDPS in particular, representative of the job's overall strength and content. But in terms of personal improvement, which is a big thing you should be using FF logs for, look at all those numbers and see where you stand. That matters a whole lot more. This person doesn't have a hashtag, but I saw them say hello, so I had to take it. Big hello. First time asker. Long time watcher. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, monk question. Recently got into 90 and really like it. However, I've only cleared savage content on tank and healer. So you've actually cleared it on the rolls that need to try. Well, tank. Healer. <laughs> healer needs to try. I have a very hard time not dropping twin and demolish, even with doing the looping rotation. Feel pretty bad. Any tips on keeping these up? There's a comment under this. I'm willing to bet the comment just says practice. Yep. Pretty sure everyone drops them once in a while. Yeah, even the best monks... So, like, it just, sometimes you're off. I mean, it's asking you to literally follow this exact pattern for, you know, two, five, eight, ten minutes. And you're going to make mistakes. That's the bottom line. I've had I've had 98 and 99 percentile runs on Monk and, like, other content in the past where I dropped Twin Snakes or Demolish at some point. Um, the overall grand scheme of it is just when you get back around to it, good. Then it becomes about how you adjust to burst windows when you're not at the same point in your rotation as you were normally. But even then, that's, I mean, that's part of improving. What, what, I'm, what, my only advice for you is to practice. That would be what my advice would be. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, Haps, probably too late for this week. <laughs> you know, normally you would be because this was asked uh, on Monday, but lucky for you. Trying to decide between Ninja and Dragoon as a fairly casual PF player. I've heard you say you're not interested in Dragoon and wondering why you don't want to play it. Y do you have any jobs that you're just, you don't really want them to change it. You don't dislike it for any, like, major reason that you would consider a detriment to the design. But you just don't have fun playing it. That's Dragoon for me. I don't want them to change anything. I don't think they should in any way uh, modify the kind of path they've gone down with Dragoon. I just know it's not as interesting to me as other things. And with 19 jobs in the game, nobody should be offended by somebody saying they don't want to play a job. They do not find a job fun. As long as they don't outright say that the job is a negative thing and they express that they personally do not enjoy it on a personal level, uh, I think that is an important distinction to be able to make. So that's it. It's just one of those jobs that I just can't have fun playing. This is a long one. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, happy. Hope you're doing all right. I'm doing all right. Doing all right. I'm doing all right. First time ask here, so I have a bonus of clearing all the next year content on your best poll instead of your worst. Looking back, actually, only one of the polls was terrible, but the other ones weren't great. I'll, I'll be real with you. I have a question that I'm not sure if the devs have answered. Well, uh, I mean, I guess I might know if they have, but otherwise I won't be too qualified to answer these. Uh, have they ever explained how adventure and need bonus works? Yeah, the when you look at, I think it's every minute, it checks to see um, what the what the role that's preventing the queue from filling, what the most frequent one is. So like if there's not enough tanks to fill queues, it tells you that the adventure and need bonus is tanks. So that normally means there's like a group of, let's say it's a, an alliance raid, and there's 24 people sitting in the line. And the only thing that keeps holding up the queues is waiting for tanks. It goes through kind of a small calculation. Um, then it'll say that. But a minute from then, it can absolutely change to another job or another role, I should say. So um, it just updates fairly frequently. So, as, But as soon as you, I think it's as soon as you press Q, it's locked in. Oh, it's been a while because I don't really do that much roulettes, to be honest. Uh, so I don't I don't really get adventure and need all that often. Um 
I think it's as soon as you queue in, as soon as you lock in your queue, that it just takes whatever it was, is actually what it um, what it goes for. So that if, yeah, if you're a healer and your queue pops instantly, that doesn't mean that um, there was healer in need. It just means the, the other role was more in need. Thus, it gets classified as that. Um, number two, uh, I imagine someone must have asked Yoshi P, have they considered adding healer mounts? Um, yeah, they've asked that a million times. Yoshi P says the, the unicorn is enough. <laughs> Um, so I guess the unicorn is enough, but you're far from the only one who's wondered this. Hashtag Mr. Epic Mondays. Hey, Haps, long time lurker. Welcome. Hello. Easy question for you. How do you do survive with just using collapsed inventory? I think expanded inventory is just, it's just annoyingly large. I get more lost looking at the expanded one than I do looking at the concentrated tabs because the tabs, the way that my sorting works is always the same. Potions and food will be on the first page. Then it'll be materia and materia related items. Then it'll be tokens and then it'll be trash. So... It's always in the same order, but when it's on the giant screen, it's just too much input all at once. So that's the, that's it. That's it. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello. Quick question. Hi. Quick answer. Why do you think uh, unlocking artifact armor die was such a comparatively easy task in Unwalker? Because they got railed for making it Memoria EX in the previous expansion. Uh, it was There was a lot of feedback that was pissed about how they did it last time, so they made it easy this time. Not to mention, because roll quests aren't mandatory, giving it some sort of incentive that relates to your artifact armor, I think was a good call. It's a, it's a healthy balance of getting some side story stuff, but also making sure that an actual functionality of something was unlocked at the same time. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hey, what's, I feel bad every time I read the Monday part, and I know it's Tuesday night when I'm recording this. Hey, what's good? Hi. Everything is good? I think. I don't know. Been watching since Heaven's Word, asking my first question. Bonus of some Bay Area warm. No, I'm good. I, I'm okay with the rain, man. We Listen, California needs the rain. I'm perfectly okay with the rain. Uh, I once had someone in Stormblood tell me that I shouldn't use a Nokian while doing my AOE. <sighs> About half an hour ago, I had someone tell me not to use flamethrower. <sighs> Questions fucks up with that. Have you ever seen anyone tell you something objectively wrong? All the time. All the time. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I think we all say things that are objectively wrong because we want to be part of the conversation. I, I think sometimes we also don't know we're objectively wrong. We're saying something that was information that was passed down from somebody else who was objectively wrong, and they were our point of contact for that information, so we, we overestimate it. That definitely, I mean, that happens with content creators. You know, I've said things that I thought were right, and people hear it, and then they say it again, and they find out it's wrong, but they refuse to change their mind because a content creator said it. Guys, come on. We're always wrong. We're always wrong at some point. Even if we try not to be, we always will be at some point. But I can tell you that the person who has given you this advice, both of these pieces of advice are wrong. <laughs> now, I will say Flamethrower is not for two or more targets. There is a target limit. I believe it's three at its current potency, but I'd have to double check. So if you're using it on two targets, that would be a problem. But if you're using it on like a giant trash pole, like 12 mobs, it's super valuable. Not to mention, every time you press Flamethrower, you could just pick up your mug of coffee Perfect coffee button. Hashtag Mr. Happy Mondays. Hello, good sir. Not sure, too sure if you've seen, but Temtem finally released its last. Oh, okay. Wondering, do you have plans of returning? Yeah, I was waiting for that. So it's going to be busy. Monster Hunter Rise on PC, Arceus, Final Fantasy VI, Elden Ring, Lost Ark, Strangers of Parrot. Oh, <laughs> so many games. I, I hate listing the number of games coming out soon. The answer is a solid maybe. I would like to return because I actually really did like Temtem. Uh, hello, happy, and a good day. This one didn't have a hashtag, so I just jumped right into it. Uh, good day to you before Savage Reset. Asking before Savage release, so it may be a quick answer, but did they break the third fight curse? What was your favorite fight? Third fight was very good. I know some people won't like it because it is a very chaotic fight for melee. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you have to do to make that fight comfortable for melee DPS, but I always enjoy fights that are not just dummies. Like, I prefer to have... Tanks have to consider this positioning and groups to maybe swap a group for like a specific mechanic so melee can get uptime. I don't know. I find that kind of group think and that kind of uh, collaboration between all the different players and all the different roles. I think that's a healthier thing for the game. It promotes better gameplay. Um, so, yeah, I think this is the best third fight we've had in a long time. And the irony of it is it's a fight, a third fight that's made up of three or more previous good third fights. It has stuff from uh, A3S, it has stuff from uh, A11S, it has stuff from Turn 12 way back when, which was the third fight. And then there's actually a couple of other elements that remind me of things from uh, 
from other third tier fights, but those are the three most pro uh, prominent ones. And the fact they were all good third fights is, I think it's kind of just natural that this would make a good third fight because of that. Hashtag Mr. Chapter Mondays, Merry Meet and Blessed Be. Same to you, just a bit of a monk question or discussion. I really like where they're going with it, okay. Would adding positional back in only for leaden fists be a good compromise in your opinion? See, I don't even have to read the rest of this because I, I know this is the rest of it's a discussion, but if that's the core question, um, no. I think if you're gonna commit to positionals on monk as a core job design, you need to commit to it all the way like it was before. Um, I think four positionals is kind of like the minimum to really consider it a core part of their identity. And I don't consider it that anymore. Um, and I don't think adding it just to Leaden Fists is the answer to that. But I, I think, as you've said, I like where they're going with it. I, I do, too. I think they found a healthy compromise between getting rid of positionals for most of its skills, making the positionals they have worth a whole lot more, and then making it so that their gameplay is a bit more dynamic. Uh, you, the openers look weird as heck when you think about the way they would have looked before. But they work super well. They flow really well and they feel really good to pull off. So um, I, I would love Positional Monk back, but I also wouldn't want to get rid of this Monk. So it's a, a bit of a conundrum, but I think they're doing a good job with Monk at this point. Hi, Haps. Hey, will you be doing a State of the Realm discussing the Savage Raid tier with other raiding content creators? Yeah, uh, we had a really tough time doing State of the Realms over the past few weeks just because of the holiday season. Um, people were getting ready for Savage. People were spending time with their families. Uh, we uh, we ourselves were busy on most of those days. So um, it was very, very tough. It was definitely better to kind of just take an end of the year break, which sucks because Endwalker just came out and we want to be talking about it a lot. Um, we haven't even really fully dived into all the story elements and uh, Ethis is still insanely busy, so we might need to grab another uh, Lore Freak for something like that. Moose, of course, first to come to mind. For the Savage one, I'm going to see if we can get one this week if schedules allow for it. But, uh, you know, we're just trying not to force Day of the Realms on people if we don't have a good show lined up. That's very, very important to us because doing them every week, we had a ton of shows that um, we had guests or we didn't have guests. And they were, even if we thought they were good topics, we were really just is searching for topics so um i feel like that doesn't put as good of a show together i feel like it sometimes did our guests a disjust uh and uh yeah no i'll go with a, a disjustice a di disin no that's not right injustice right like the like the comic book there you go <laughs> um yeah it did them an injustice and uh yeah we just want to make sure the shows are, are good Hashtag Mr. Happy Monday. Hey, Happy, I have a macro question for you. Okay, I recently discovered how to use them and they're fun. I've been using them for my ability to... Ooh, I have a feeling I know where the rest of this question is going. Yeah, that's no good. I'm going to be honest with you. A few runs in my expert roulette caused a few problems. A few people said that DPS don't need to use them. They're only there for end game content. It's really annoying to use them and clogging up. This has got to be a troll question. Okay, this didn't go in any way, in anywhere. Yeah, if you have party chat or say chat on for your random attacks, I don't care if it's Madari or you just take it off. It's so, so not good. It just clogs the chat unnecessarily. Also, I wouldn't, don't macro your abilities. Don't just macro random abilities. Don't uh, combine abilities. Don't just throw a macro on an ability just because you want to. Every ability you have a macro on is reducing your DPS because you can no longer make use of the game's queuing. So every single one of your inputs is at minimum going to suffer from the game's innate latency. So that's 100 MS. You're guaranteed to lose 100 MS on every skill. So every 25 skills, you're losing a whole skill use. Then, if your ping is anything over 100, it's going to be, like, if you have, like, let's say you had, like, 87 ping, so you have 187 ping total, um, it, it accelerates it more. And if you have that for every single skill, the, uh, there's a good, good chance you're losing more than 100 milliseconds per button press. Um, so... I would not advise doing this. I would definitely not advise doing party chat unless it's announcing something important like who you're raising. And I wouldn't advise doing it for abilities, for attack skills at all because it is genuinely a DPS loss. All right, so the video recording is coming up on like 33, 34 minutes. So I am going to try to lightning round. I'm even seeing people like posting like, oh, I'm posting this for the lightning round. 
So uh, I'm going to start doing that lightning round the rest of these like we normally do. Back to normal, but still lightning rounding towards the ends once the recordings start getting a little too long. So I can get some more answers in. Uh, here's one for hello for the lightning round. I think you're going to be busy again. By the time you read the 6.05, will come out. So my question is the main monk and the ninja and then back to monk after the changes. Which do you think is best? Monk was better before the changes. Monk is better after the changes. Please wait for patch 6.08 before ninja will be an actually better job. But at least it's playable now. So that's something I couldn't say before because now your ride juice aren't a piece of shit. So enjoy whichever job you enjoy because it really doesn't matter. Because unless you're doing cutting edge content with the world first content, it's not going to really matter. At the end of the day, you just got to play what you enjoy. Anyway, on to the next question. Uh, Viera, do, will we get more helmets for them? Uh, the Res Mage helmet in particular? I never have faith. Even though they have the Reaper helmet, I don't have faith ever of getting helmets. I just can't, I can't place faith in getting Viera helmets ever. Uh, this person didn't say hello, but I guess I'll answer it anyway. With the increased in attention being given the extra content, do you think they'll be remaking the Deep Dungeon system in more interesting room last? They're not going to go back and redo old Deep Dungeons. What they might do is readjust the way that it's programmed for the new ones. I mean, they do that anyway. They did it with Heaven on High between Deep Dungeon. But I do think that when I say rework, I don't really mean much systemically. I mean, they'll probably have a few more different layouts um, than they do now. I, I think that's it because I don't think they can systematically change it too much and have the people who really, really enjoy it still enjoy it to the same capacity. Um, it's definitely one of those things where if you try to please too many people, the people who love that content are not going to be as interested in it. Yes, they will still have the old ones, but they definitely like to enjoy the new ones as well. Uh, let's see. Um... What's another one? Here's another hashtag one. I don't like Deep Dungeons and I've never finished it or Heaven on High. Do you think I'm missing a lot of story content? No, you could explain the story of Deep Dungeons usually in a sentence or two. And the implications of those stories are a little more interesting. Palace of the Dead, for example, essentially collecting souls as they uh, bury into the ground. Um, because I think Nebeth Abdelord was trying to resurrect, uh, not himself, I don't think he was trying to obtain eternal life. I feel like he was trying to resurrect somebody. We find using the souls, but then it tells you a lot about the Gilmoran society and like what they viewed and how they were before their downfall. Um, on top of that, you get a lot of pretty cool uh, occurrences in there when it comes to characters that have passed. Heaven on High was a training facility by ancient Allegans in which they uh, they were essentially training a resistance group against the Allegans, and that's why all the bosses, almost all the bosses at least, are bosses that you would have encountered inside of. Uh, inside of like the world of darkness and the circus tower and stuff because you're training against those different characters now again that's not every boss but that's most the, the floor 90 boss the essential final boss is Zon is a Sunday clone for a good reason um, and so there's there's some pretty interesting things that are implied through the few quests that are there but it's more world building than it is major lore or story you know, it's 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 just it fills in some gaps and gives you a few things to roll around the noggin. Next one is, I remember when Ninja was first added, a lot of people thought they were going to be putting it on Striking Gear with Monk. They did put it on Striking Gear with Monk. Um, that was We didn't just think that, they did. What we didn't think is that they'd add scouting for afterwards. Um, that was that was part of the prediction that wasn't true. So we did, it, They we were right, but then they also went the extra mile and did scouting gear as well. Um, do you think it's more likely to get a new scouting job in a future expansion? Yeah, we'll get a new scouting job. They've, they've already said that the main reason Reaper was made maiming was because they don't see the melee. Like, even though the melee as a, as a role had four jobs, they looked at maiming and scouting and saw that they each had one. So they went with maiming because Dragoon was out before Ninja. So it's technically the role that's gone the longest without a new job being added to it. So it's very likely we see a scouting job in the near future. Almost certainly. In next, Maybe even next expansion. I wouldn't even be surprised. Uh, let's see. Um, don't mind the lightning round format. Yeah, but I do. <laughs> it's nice for me sometimes, but you know, that's fine. What are your thoughts on 14's buff display system? I've been doing EX farming and trying to align uh, bursts with buffs. It's hard to tell when you have 10 buffs on you what it, what's a damage boost and what's a regen or a shield. Yeah, it would be nice if you could separate enhancements to be things that were more damage. The more, the more options they add for stuff like this, the better. So I am in support of adding another enhancement timer that specifically refers to um, damage related buffs, things that buff critical hit rate, direct hit rate, uh, directly damage, anything of that capacity. Um, I'm fully in support of more things that would allow us to cut. Honestly, I'd like them to forego categories for buffs and just let us freely decide 
Um, just give us a drop down of buffs that exist from the other jobs in the game and choose where to put them on which bars. That modular system, I think, would solve all the issues that you could possibly have. But I doubt it's designed for that. They'd have to redesign it entirely from the ground up, and I think that's not something they're planning on doing anytime soon. Um, why does the game make it nigh impossible to tell the buffs and debuffs you place on your party members' buffs and debuffs? Yeah, I guess that kind of, my answer still kind of does that. If we could do everything modularly, then you wouldn't have that issue either. Um, let's see. Do you think we'll be getting two ultimate encounters this expansion? Bold statement. Bold thing to make me say. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I'm really really hoping we don't have another situation i think they're gonna do the second one in point three so that way in case of an issue with the production of this of the second ultimate this expansion that it's not at the end because that was the main thing that cost us an, an uh, ultimate last expansion is because as players who were doing it we told them you should do it in point five because that way we have something more exciting to do while we wait for the next expansion and they tried to take that piece of advice, and it backfired because of events that were out of their control. So I think they should just go with the second one in point three to eliminate that possibility, because then even if it does get delayed, it gets delayed to point five. And I think that's a far better situation for us to uh, end up in. Do you find trying old ultimates easier now than ever? Yeah, you obliterate them now. To be fair, they already weren't that difficult for me because I've done them so many times. But even objectively speaking, they are... Uh, yeah, it's bad. Um... A year between a Realm of Run and Endwalker seems ridiculous. Uh, just seems so crammed. Yeah, a lot of stuff happens in that time. Uh, the question was whether Yoshi P and his team would consider making Eureka like... They, no, they're not going to go back and rework Eureka to be like Boja. It's, it's effort that's not worth anything. The only reason Boja is the way that it is with the leveling is because they knew they weren't doing a deep dungeon. But they're not going to go back to Eureka and completely rework it to make it something where you level. It's it's way too much effort, given that they have to completely reprogram it from the ground up, rebalance it, redesign it, just to have another leveling method from 61 to 70. No, that's definitely not going to happen. Nor do I think they should do it. Um, then we have another one, another one on the NFTs. Okay. Um, let's see... So anyone excited for the level of intricacy for the level 81 dungeon boss? I didn't think it was intricate. A lot of people think it's intricate. The level the level 71 stuff, the very first boss in Holminster Switch was like AoE central. They did a really good job with the with the Shadowbringers dungeon right out the gate too. The 71, even the final boss of the 71 dungeon. I don't think it was any more mechanically intense in quotes because I wouldn't you call it intense in the first place than dungeon bosses that were in the expansion that came right before it um I, I i don't think anything more of it like there's a lot of stuff here like do you think they went back to what they knew for dungeon no i don't it's not any different to me i don't see any difference between this dungeon these dungeon bosses and the old dungeon bosses at least specifically shadowbringers looking one expansion back um find myself overly frustrated with the application of glamour plates in the field. <laughs> I don't have any answers about glamour plate related stuff. I apologize because I literally have a single glamour plate set and I almost never use it. So <laughs> that's, that's it. Um, let's see. I don't think Astro button bloat it fine the way it is. No, it's not. <laughs> There's no reason why play, why draw and play should be different buttons and minor arcana and crown play should be different buttons. That's that's unnecessary. Just it's I you've been the whole thing you typed was one long run on sentence and I don't feel like reading the whole thing because it's wrong. Uh, let's see, white mage, dark arts. <laughs> I don't want dark arts. Listen, I understand you, Krasia, is like sage for dark arts. I didn't I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like dark arts. I wasn't a big fan. Eucrasia works a little better because you don't have to use it nearly as frequently, but still. Um, there's another opinion on, uh, Savage question, you know, I'll, I'll skip through that because I kind of answered it before and I'll be doing a video on it separately. Um, do you think we would get a single player mode of 14 after another 10 years? No, not 10 years from now. It would have to be when they were considering shutting down the game. And I do think Final Fantasy XI will get an offline version in the next five years. Um, it's because they're already making Dragon Quest X offline and that still gets updates. So I wouldn't be surprised to see XI go the same route. But 14, no, 14, probably not until it's on its very last legs. Uh, but I do think one day it is absolutely going to happen. Maybe not before I'm old and, and decrepit and everything, but it'll happen at some point. Um, you can duo Wreath of Snakes. I almost sold, I soloed it to Enrage today. 
Um, so it's definitely soloable. I just need more gear um, and 25% echo. I did it at 5% echo. I, I got it to enrage. I think uh, you had 30% HP left. No pots, no food. Um, only 5% echo. So with full 600 gear, yeah, that's probably going to be doable. And I got to see if I can do it on Gunbreaker because if I can do it on Gunbreaker, that'll help a decent bit as well. Um, hmm. Let's see. Long time watcher, watch your Reaper Thought video and only had one problem about the class. Do you think they can fix Soul So spell to be used more than once? Well, the thing is, you don't use it only once, but. Well, you're not supposed to, at least. Um, Soul So should be something you are charging if there's ever downtime, but there is not a lot of downtime. Um, you should be charging Soul So, for example, during um, P2S, the limit cut phase, P3S, whenever the boss is dive bombing. Um, or if you cannot get uptime on one of the birds while they're dashing around, that would definitely be a time to do it. If you ever screw up, by the way, and you're just catching downtime, might as well soul so as long as you have five seconds. <laughs> like if you're screwed up, like positioning really bad and you can't get back to the boss, but that's a last resort kind of thing. That's really more of a harp situation on the fear because you don't want to be out there for five seconds. Um, and P4S doesn't have a whole lot. I don't think there's a time where there's five seconds that you're not hitting the boss. So that one's tough. So the fights aren't really great designed to use it more than once, but I'm surprised they designed it that way in the first place. I think it would have been better if there was, if you could do that out of, uh, you know, out of range, but that if there was another way to charge it. But with how strong Reaper is right now, I don't want them to change anything that involves them being better. <laughs> they don't need it. Other times need it more. Um... Let's see, hold on, if Arcanist wasn't 1.0, then White Mage was the only healer. Actually, for a while, Thaumaturges could also be healers, um, and they were really busted, too. But yeah, essentially, White Mage was the only real healer that you had in uh, in 1.x. Think they'll ever get rid of classes? They've talked about it a million times, but they've also said it's very difficult to do. It's basically ingrained into every aspect of the game's design, and doing it essentially means ripping out the foundation, which is never a good thing, whether it be a house or Final Fantasy XIV. Um, I do think they should rip out the foundation at some point because that foundation is uh, a failed game. But, you know, you got to start somewhere, right? I suppose. Uh, so we probably won't see it unless we get an engine rework. And even then we might not because they are relevant to the lore. Um, hmm, let's see. There's the Isekai thing. Tanking his easy mode. Uh, another NFT question. Hate the concept of being held to a standard of levering time not spent doing a GCD so strictly that clipping is a problem. Having to worry about staff butt potion coming out slow enough where you lose precious milliseconds. Um, I goof up my rotation all the time. It's definitely pretty sensitive. Having to speed run games is something that makes everything feel so, I don't know, mechanical. So, uh, well, I mean, yeah, it's not that deep. There's somebody, there's a comment under that that just says it's not that deep. People screw up and clip and stuff all the time, and we don't really care. We're just like, okay, next time we'll do it better. And that's the end of it. We don't really, we don't let, we don't let things hang. It's not worth it, man. We just go, ah, I fucked that up. Okay, do better next time. That's it. Because what else can you do in life other than, you know, take things in stride and just improve? There were definitely some questions I skipped around on that I meant to go back to, but I think I've already forgotten what they were. <laughs> I think, I'm pretty sure I've already forgotten. I'm scrolling through real quick just to see if there there was something that I totally, uh, that I totally forgot um, here. Let's see. Uh, there was a, oh, there was another dan a dancer question. Um... What is your opinion on leaving out specific jobs, harder content? I understand why some people do it. It's so dumb, though. Most of the time, it's the player that's a problem, not the job itself. I do think Dancer needs Jesus right now, but even then, it's still like, this, bro, you're not, it's not, it upsets me. I think it's dumb. You think the Warrior of Light will be a disciple of magic in future trailers? One day. Not today, though. That's <laughs> How do link pearls work in the lore of the world? I think they have ether signatures that match. So you can like re it. That's how they like intercept signals is they have to reattune their ether to match a certain frequency. But it is essentially uh, f wave frequency like it would be in real life, like a radio would be or uh, or like a walkie talkie or something like that. But um, it's it's ether. They, it's, it's an ether frequency more than anything else. Um, button bloat, uh, there's a button bloat question here. What do you think the, the plan is for the next expansion with new abilities? I mean, they always trim some, add some. Sometimes they just don't trim enough, and sometimes they add one too many. So that's just something that is always kind of on a balancing edge. When they get feedback that it's too crazy, they usually make an adjustment. So it's normally, um, normally A-OK. -okay. Uh, let's see, spirit bond. How does spirit bond work? I don't know the exact value. I think plus one spirit bond is plus one percent of whatever the value was. So like, let's say you had 10% plus 10 spirit bond and you received 8% spirit bond for beating something, it would actually be worth another 0.8, which I believe would be rounded up to nine. 
So, um, but it does count the decimals, even though it's not showing you the decimals of your spirit bond generation. So I'm pretty sure that's it, but I, I'm actually not 100% certain myself. So take that entire answer with a grain of salt. Um, week one clear. Ah, oh, there's definitely another one here that I wanted to look at that I don't remember. Uh, I Man, yeah, there's just a few comments about a few different things here. Uh, there was one about, is there a whisper when you fail melds? No. <laughs> That's just the sound you're hearing of you failing the melds, but it's not a whisper. Um, those might be other voices whispering to you, in which case, I'd get that checked out. Because, you know, probably not the best. <laughs> There's a spoiler-related one about the names of fates. I'll leave it out. I just kind of don't want to deal with it. It's it's not even about... I don't even care about the spoilers, to be honest. But I know, I know I'm going to get that one person. That one person... He's upset, and I'm just don't even want to deal with it, especially not during a lightning round. Um, there was definitely something else, but uh, unfortunately, it's this recording's taken a while, so I'm gonna wrap things up because even the lightning round took a while. But anyway, thank you for asking your questions for this week's episode of Weekly QA with Happy, which will go back to being Mondays with Mr. Happy next week. Be sure to ask a comment in the comment section, uh, ask a question in the comment section if you have one, and with that, I'm gonna get back to making some other videos as well. I'll post this Wednesday morning, it'll be fine anyway. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on Monday. And until then, take care.